Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and this week we are going to start a new series. This is called Conway's Game of Life, based on, obviously, uh, John Conway's Game of Life. This is basically just uh, going to be maybe like a three-part series, kind of showing you how you would go about coding or programming this in Unity using C Sharp and uh, some of Unity's uh, game engine components or game objects that, uh, you know, in an object-oriented approach are going to make this a little simpler uh, with a lot less code maybe. Um, definitely more memory consumption, but who cares. So let's, uh, let's start uh, simply by just going through and doing the setup, okay? So as you all like or already know, what I'd like to do first is I like to create my folder structure here. And I already know that I'm going to use several types of folders. One is going to be a graphics folder, and then we're gonna need a resources folder to hold the prefabs, which I'm also going to create. Even though we're gonna only have one prefab. So graphics resources, scenes we're going to have another folder called scripts and I think that's basically that okay so the one thing I want to do first is I want to go to the graphics folder and we're gonna drag in our our graphic and this is just a 16 by 16 uh, pixel uh, PNG file and I've just uh, colored in black so basically what I did is I opened up Photoshop and uh, created a new document that was going to be 16 by 16 pixels and filled the background in with black, saved it as a PNG, and then I dragged it into Unity. So now we need to tell Unity how many pixels per unit we want to use, right? So since this is 16 by 16, it's relatively simple to just say we want to use 16 by 16 pixels, or 16 pixels per unit. And what that means per unit, and you know, I've already explained this in I think every single one of my videos, but you know, maybe you guys didn't watch the other ones and you still want to know what this means. The pixels per unit, see, uh, Unity counts uh, space in its viewport as units rather than pixels, and that kind of helps with the scaling of the display. So uh, if you're drawing in units, then it doesn't matter how many pixels something gets, it's pretty much pixel independent. You're just telling this unity now how many pixels we are going to use per unit so if we have 16 pixels per unit then each one of unity's units is going to be 16 is going to represent 16 pixels okay so then the only other thing that we'll have to change is the filter we're going to set that to point and uh, I lied that wasn't the only thing we had to change we also have to make a uh, change to the camera and I'm also going to change this um, display ratio so what we're going to work with is 1024 by 768, okay, which used to be a standard resolution for monitors uh, several years ago. Most monitors now display in 1920 by 1080 uh, or 4K, which is 3040 by 2160. And then Mac monitors are like 2560 by 1440, which is 1440p, which is considered 2K. Um, so just to keep things simple, we're going to go with 1024 by 6, 768. Um, we're going to have to change our camera to represent an actual size that we can work with that is going to give us enough screen space so that uh, we can have basically our little 16 by 16 squares fill up our screen as if we were looking at a 1024 by 768 resolution. Um, so what I mean by that is, I'm gonna throw this 16 by 16 block in here real quick so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. So this right here represents one unit in Unity, okay? So right now, our camera size is five units. And the way that the camera size is calculated is it's the height divided by two. So the height in units divided by two gives us five units. So we should be able to fit 10 of these blocks from top to bottom into this camera size. But 
what we want to do is we want to fit 768 divided by 16, which happens to be 48. Yep, which happens to be 48. Okay, so in order to fit 48 into this camera view, we're going to have to change this camera size to 24. Because remember, the camera size is half the height of the unit. So what we do is we just put 24 here in the size, and now we'll easily be able to fit 48 of these little blocks here. See, we didn't change the resolution. The resolution is still 1024 by 768. We haven't changed the size of our block. But what we did change is the orthographic camera size, which is the, the, the size that, you're, that we're giving the camera, like how much of the view does the camera see. So we want our camera to basically live into, in that 1024 by 768 resolution and represent pixel for pixel our, our um, actual squares. So what we're looking at here is a scaled version. Actually, this is not a scaled version. This, is a, uh, this view actually represents a 1024 by 768 pixel area inside of my screen. Okay, maybe not inside of yours, but inside of my monitor. This is 1024 by 768 in this tiny little square. It's, it's crazy to think that monitor resolutions used to have this by default. I'm looking at a 5K screen. So this is literally just a tiny little corner on my monitor somewhere. So this will give us 64 columns and 48 rows. Okay, so X from zero to 63 and Y from 0 to 47. So uh, the other thing we have to do is we have to change where the camera is and with respect to where our zero, 0 coordinate is on the screen. Because if we look at this uh, sprite, or yeah, this is basically a game object with a sprite renderer. If we look at the actual position of that being at 0, 0, we want our we want to use these positions, right? We don't want to move our uh, our square, our cell. We don't want to move that to be, you know, we don't want to move that to be in the corner of the camera because if we did that, then our positioning would be weird. Because, I mean, look at this. You don't want to work. I mean, this would be like negative 31.5 and negative 23.5. That would be our actual position of our block in the very bottom corner. So then we would have to account for offsets and all other kinds of things to work with like, you know, arrays and stuff because it's just easier if our array were to start at zero and then go all the way to however many rows we have and all the way however many columns we have. So what we want to do is we want to adjust the camera's position so that its corner lines up with the corner of zero zero for our first block. So what I always like to do is I start out with my first block at zero, zero, okay? Just to make sure that we're in the right place. And then I move the camera, okay? If you don't want to use math, then the easiest way to do this is to just move the camera until you get very, very close, okay? So like you can move all the way to almost the, um, the outside of the left of the block and then all the way out to the bottom. And you can kind of guess, and if you look, we're at like 31.4 and 23.4 and you know since we're dealing with units we're either going to be dealing with a whole unit or a half a unit it's not going to be 0.4 of a unit or point you know eight of a unit or whatever because the uh the pivot points on these like the camera for instance uh, i don't see if we can see the pivot point for the camera uh the pivot point on the camera is in the middle obviously the pivot point on the graphic is also in the middle. So that means that in order for them to sit by side by side of each other, there has to be like a, uh, a half of a unit somewhere. So the way that we can calculate this literally with math, in, instead of, you know, guessing here, we could do 48, which is the height, right? That's how many units we are high. Because remember, 48 times 16 gives us our 768 um, pixels in the height. So if we divide that by 2, we get 24, right? 
but we can't use 24 because like I said the pivot points are in the center of the camera and the um, actual blocks so we have to account for that half of the unit somewhere so basically we subtract half of that from the camera so that it's actually at the bottom and then we subtract half of that from you know each side to make sure that that cube is exactly at the zero zero position okay hopefully 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 that makes sense so now if we go back here and we look at our game view you can see that this cube is right at the very bottom uh, bottom left corner of the camera okay so the next thing what I want to do is I want to create a prefab of this so we're going to stick that into the prefabs folder and I'm going to rename that to cell and then we're going to just delete that from the scene so with that, um, I mean that's basically our setup. The uh, the next tutorial we're gonna create some scripts to actually uh, attach one. That's gonna be for the cell itself. That'll just hold some properties of the cell, and actually we'll probably add a method here and there to manipulate what the cell is, because in the game of life you have cells that are either alive or dead. And, and I mean, they, they have two states. And then uh, you have uh, basically, you know, for our purposes, all the cells are going to be like generated. They're all gonna be generated at the very beginning. So we're gonna have um, 48 times uh, 64 cells. And uh, that's gonna fill up our screen. And then basically we're gonna create randomness. <laughs> Love that. Going to create randomness, and uh, some cells are going to be alive, and some cells are going to be dead right from the beginning. And then from there, it just goes and loops and loops and loops, and uh, it just kind of you know kills cells and brings others to life based on specific conditions that we're going to set. So yeah, next tutorial is going to start the scripts, and then the tutorial after that, hopefully, we'll finish it up. So. I'm just going to call this one the end. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments go down below. Don't forget to subscribe to all your friends. And don't forget to click that bell for notifications. I'll see you guys next week.